Hi guys, I'm Backlark97 and I'm here with a figure review and I haven't done any figure reviews in weeks. This is the first review I'll be doing this year, 2013, which um, I hope this year is going to be awesome figure wise. Um, before I get straight into this review, um, please let me know guys what things you've had for Christmas, what figures you've had, um, or just anything you, you want to let me know. I'll really love to hear uh, from you guys. Um, and uh, I will be doing another video shortly, um, basically saying what I'll be doing this year, what reviews I'll be doing. Cause rather than me just randomly putting a review up, I want to basically get sorted what reviews I'm going to be doing, you know, what type of reviews, what other videos I might be doing as well, um, rather than just figure reviews and my cloned series. Um, but yeah, I'm going to save that for a, yeah, another video. So I decided to review this, which is um, something that, even though it came out last year in the summer or whenever it was, um, I have held out for a long time to try and get one of these. They did start off quite expensive. They were 30 somewhere, uh, wanted 40 for this. Waited long enough, managed to get it for 20 which was really awesome, which is crazy, cause, uh, of the price I've paid in the past for other uh, Batman figures, and it is of course the Legacy Edition Batman and Catwoman figure set, and of course this is a huge box. It won't even fit on the camera. Look, look at the size of that, massive. Um, so you've got this really nice logo up the top there, exactly the same, pretty much packaging but bigger um, as the Nightwing figure we got before. On the side here, we do have Batman and Catwoman looking very nice there. Um, on this side you've got a picture of Batman and then the DC logo at the top and then there's this inside piece of card which looks like the bat signal yeah it is and then this really nice backdrop of um, Arkham City which looks fantastic and of course this box is now falling apart take a look on the back though you do have these very cool pictures you've got Batman <coughs> You've got Batman and Catwoman again, um, figures, then there's a bio of Batman, if you can pause and read that, and then a bio of Batman, I did say ba Batman here, yeah. a bio of Catwoman here, and then as you can see that's the Two-Face um, Uncle Sam there. So let's just put this back, remove this big box out of the way, try not to kill my Hush figure. And, yeah, as you can see, that was an absolutely huge box. So, we got the figures here. So, you do get two figures in this twin pack, which was, uh, you know, quite good price-wise. You get um, a Batman wearing blue rather than black. Uh, the black one was with uh, Two-Face. Going to put that wood down there. And then this really nicely done uh, Catwoman. She... Uh, now... I have got both Catwoman figures. The one I do have, um, the other day I was trying to pose her, I was ready to go up on the shelf, and the leg, uh, the, not leg, the arm broke off. Um, I think the joint was worn away, so I'm going to have to glue that back on. Um, it is a bit of a shame, because it was one that I got from the show, therefore I won't be able to take it back. Um, but oh well, I do have this one instead. And to be honest, out of the two, I kind of prefer this one. I don't know what it is about this figure. It just seems more like the Catwoman from the game that we saw compared to the uh, DC Collectibles one. So let's take a look at the figures. We're going to have a look at the Batman first. Now, this is the Mattel Batman from the Legacy Edition. And instead of it being the DC Collectibles one, um, it is a... Um, I want to say a much better figure, but... I prefer this one in a way to the original, the DC Collectibles one, for one reason and one reason only. I prefer the Batman with more articulation than with the articulation we got with the other figures. And they've kind of made him look more like he's from the game. Now, although the DC Collectibles ones were fantastically sculpted, um, and they're definitely really awesome figures, especially the most recent one, the Series 3 figure, he was such an awesome uh, character that they'd done. But my only problem was that the joints on the figures, they were very badly done. I mean, you move the legs and then they end up with that wobbly leg syndrome. I uh, don't know what that was. Um, so the only thing really that I that 
that I didn't like about them was the the articulation and and sometimes they the uh some of the things that they did to the figures to make them to make them theirs now the thing I prefer about this one is the head sculpt the head sculpt although it's sort of more blended you know it's got no definition so much it just looks more like batman in in my uh, in my case I just prefer this batman um, now some of the details are closer to be honest to the game than the DC collectibles one apart from this this uh, bat symbol on his chest it's a lot broader and they've made it kind of look more deep however it does look more like the symbol um, than the one on the DC collectibles variant then um, there is this paint issue which it is blue now if you played Arkham Asylum he he did have more of a, a blue purple color rather than a black um, the black figure um, rather than this blue one came with um, Two-Face therefore they were trying to give it a bit more of a, a you know a variant really so you're not getting the exact same figure which technically you are it's the same same sculpt and everything but um no, I, if I'm honest with you, I do prefer the fact that they've used a blue rather than a black on this one, because that means it is, you know, another way of making it slightly different to the DC Collectibles one. Um, so I was able to go out and buy it and say, you know, no, it's not the complete same figure because it's not. It is, um, it is a different figure. So if we take a look at the articulation, there is a lot of articulation on these um, DC Collectibles figures. No, they're not. There's a lot more than the DC Collectibles figures is what I meant to say um, on these Mattel figures so you do have a very nicely ball jointed head um, he doesn't have any articulation here because of the cape his arms do go forward and back and then they do have the outward motion then they do have a joint at the top there a bend at the elbow no swivel at the uh, gauntlet there but they do have a swivel wrists but they don't seem to move very well um, on mine at all. He does have this uh, ab crunch there, which to be to be fair is really quite stiff, which is awesome. Um, they, they can sometimes end up sort of hunching forward like the Joker's does. Um, then he does have the forward and backward motion on the leg. Doesn't go back too far, um, which is weird. He does have that weird DCUC bend at the side, but it doesn't go out very far at all. Um, so that was kind of a waste of time, I suppose. Bend at the knee. It's quite a strong joint, not as strong as the DC uh, collectibles version because it doesn't have the ratchet joint and then a bend at the foot. So yeah, articulation wise this Batman is just really awesome. I am talking for way too long today. Um, he does have a really nicely done belt. They haven't gone over the top with all the different pouches like they did with the DC collectibles version. However, they do have more definition on the belt here than with the DC collectibles version which is much better um, he does have some sculpting on the back which is really cool um, yeah he's just a really awesome figure he's probably one of my favorite Batman figures overall uh, yeah just a really really nice figure the only problem I have really is the fact that he can't hold any accessories at all um, he's, his hands are always gripped like they are now and he won't hold anything which is a real shame um, yeah, that 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 was probably something that they probably could have changed slightly. Um, so let's move on to the Catwoman in the very short space of time we have left. Um, this is a, a version of the Catwoman. Now, compared to the DC Collectibles one, the DC Collectibles one had the goggles up. And the face sculpt was questionable of how close it was to the video game. But this one just does look more like the video game character. Um, they have tried to humanise the DC Collectibles one a bit too much. Uh, compared to this one and this one they have done a fantastic job um, I love the fact that the goggles are down instead uh, although some people would have liked the option of having the goggles up I imagine it does just look better like this and I suppose that's because of the trap of of the eyes that, that they had on the DC collectibles version the eyes were a bit weird I suppose they tried to make it like cat eyes but it, it didn't work in my opinion so she does come with an accessory and it is the whip. I think it was just um, a whip that they used before, possibly with another cat one in this DC, um, DC Mattel, DC uh, Waves, probably in the DC UC collection. And she does hold it pretty well. If you do have the DC Collectibles version, which came with the Caltrop, no, 
no, it didn't. It come with the bolas. That was it. The bolas. If you had the the bolas, then you could hold that as well. Um, the whip is sculpted in this one specific way, but I don't think that weights the figure down at all. It's probably just a nice touch to have. The sculpting on this figure is really nice as well. Um, they have gone all out really to make this figure look cool. Um, that accessory probably just make it. A little bit better so you are getting a lot for your money so she does have some decent articulation she does have a ball jointed head she does have that forward and backward motion and outward motion she does have a swivel at the top of the arm there bend at the elbow swivel at the wrist she does have an ab crunch which is pretty low down um, waist swivel forward and backward motion on the legs it's more of a forward motion because of her um, backside uh, the outward motion on the legs that DC you see like to do um, that they've done on this Legacy Edition wave as well. Swivel at the top, well, it's the lower part of the leg really, bend at the knee, and then a foot bend as well. So these two are a really nice uh, pair of figures. Just one more thing, I think the Batman does have, yeah, he does, he does have a waist swivel. Um, it's the DC collectibles that don't, so I apologise for that. Really nice pair of figures, awesome collection to have if you do manage to get all of these. Um, the only way you're going to get that second Joker is with this twin pack, and although his head is quite small, he is worth picking up. I can't get them, uh, which is a shame. I'm going to keep looking. Now, there is a variant of this pack. There is the artwork version where you get both figures, um, but they're in the sort of like the black and white colours like you saw on the front of the, um, the boxes. This is the Legacy Edition. No. Game of the Year edition. Um, it was that sort of print colour. So, um, yeah, these figures do stand up pretty tall. They are taller, as you would know, than the um, Movie Masters range. And then they're in probably just a little bit taller than the Legacy Edition Joker from the comic series. Yeah, just a bit taller. And then, of course, much taller than the uh, Iron Man 2 action figure of the War Machine. So, thanks very much for watching, guys. Loads of reviews coming up uh, this week. So, um, until next time, guys, please remember to like, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.